Hi guys, week three of summer reading story time. All right, so today I have some stories about ponds and streams and some of the animals that live there. But first, we have to get started with our stretch. So stand up, 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 up. All right, we're gonna reach up to the sky and down to our toes. And reach out to the side really wide and touch your nose. And flop like a chicken, call like a girl, go, go, go. Wiggle down the ground like a seed. And what do seeds do? They grow. Very good. All right, so our first story has a lot of different types of animals in it. It is called Over and Under the Pond by Kate Mester and Christopher Silas Neal. Mm -hmm. All right, Over and Under the Pond. Over the pond we slide, splashing through lily pads, sweeping through reeds. The water's a mirror reflecting the sky, sunshine and clouds, and then a shadow below. What's down there? I ask. Under the pond, mom says. What do you think it is? Under the pond is a whole hidden world of minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs, we're paddling over them right now. Over the pond, we skim past tall rushes. Whirligig beetles loop and twirl, skaters on a warm summer surface. Under the pond, minnows dart through waving forests of grass while a brook trout lurks, ready to lunge. Over the pond, we flip and dip and pull past a row of painted turtles on a waterlogged tree. One, two, three, they slip off and away. Splash, gurgle, spoof, under the pond. Over the pond, cattails rustle and shush in the wind. Listen close. Red winged blackbirds race by. One has grass for her nest. Under the pond, a cadissa fly larva builds a home of her own, a secret shelter of pebbles and sand. Over the pond, shadows of trees lean out from the shore. We coast under a low hanging branch. A moose looks up with a mouthful of water lilies. We've interrupted his lunch. Under the pond, Beavers dive deep. They pump with powerful tails and rise to the surface with delectable roots from the mud. Over the pond, wind gives us a push and stirs the light dappled leaves on shore. There on a branch, a new goldfinch teeters, ready, finally ready to fly. Under the pond, tadpoles are changing, learning to hop. They're losing their tails, growing legs, and growing up. Over the pond, there at the shore, but tall and silent and still, a great blue heron stares down into the deep. It tenses, takes one long-legged step, and strikes. It catches a wiggling quicksilver minnow from where it was hiding under the pond. Over the pond, we drift, heads tipped into the sun. A woodpecker clings to a teetering pine, digging for ants. Under the pond, an otter claws for freshwater mussels. Over the pond, a sleepy dragonfly lands for a rest. His spindly legs tickles my knee. Under the pond, a dragonfly larva, dragonfly larva watch what swims by. They catch minnows and monster fast jaws. Over the pond, the shadows stretch. Osprey circle on quiet wings. Raccoons and minks stalk the shoreline for supper. Under the pond, with a flip of a tail, 
a crayfish disappears in the dark. Over the pond, we head for home. We slide, we glide, swish bump, right into the shore as a far off moon calls goodnight. The sky turns from sunset to dusk to dark. Night settles over the pond, the prowling catfish and drowsy turtles, the scuttling crayfish and tadpoles turn frogs, wading herons and stalking raccoons. And the hidden world under the pond. The end. There was a lot of animals in that one. I think we could stretch and move like some of those animals. What do you think? Yeah. Let's give it a try. All right, so we had, I have, a, I have a list. We had frogs, tadpoles, turtles, mooses, meese, moose, meese. That's a complicated one. There was a moose. Um, there were herons. Mm, let's see, let's start with the tadpole. So we're gonna wiggle like a tadpole. Wiggle like a tadpole. And then tadpoles turn into what? Frogs, so we're gonna jump like a frog. Ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> and then we're gonna swim like a turtle. So we need to swim like a turtle. And then we're gonna munch like a moose. And then we gotta stalk like a heron. So herons got really big legs and they got the wings out to the side. So we gotta, Stalk like a heron. <laughs> Good job, you gotta lift your, lift your knees up high. There you go, very good job. Now, I don't know what herons sound like, so I'm not gonna try that, but good job jumping like a frog and stretching. All right, so our next story is called Beyond the Pond. So we were just under the pond and over the pond. Now we're gonna go beyond the pond. All right, Beyond the Pond by Joseph Quaffler. I hope I'm saying that right. Just behind an ordinary house filled with too little fun, Ernest D. had decided today would be the day that he had explored the depths of his pond. So he tried sticking a stick and dipping a hook and sinking a stone, but nothing touched. My pond has no bottom, said Ernesty. My pond goes on forever. I've always wanted to explore a pond with no bottom. Oh, how exceptional. So Ernesty gathered his explorer supplies. So he's got uh, fans, flashlight, camera, can't forget the chocolate, a net, a wooden sword, stamps, and a postcard, binoculars, let's see, a rope with a hook, scuba helmet, magnifying glass, notebook, and can't forget the dog bone. He stretched three times and prepared to set off. I hope they allow dogs down there, he said. And with that, Ernest D. dove. What do we see here? There's a squid, fish, some sharks. I don't know if that would be in a pond. Down between the fishes and the frogs, past the squid and the sharks and the shapeless things, into his pond forever deep. He dove into the lightless stretches and through sunken treasures. I think someone forgot to turn the lights on in this part of my pond, he said. Ernest D. dove farther into his pond than anyone had ever gone before, until at last he came up on the other side. The other side of his pond was big and raucous. It was oh so tiny. There's a mouse riding a unicorn. 
and it was oh so tall in every shape in between. The best of all, it was just for him. But this new place was other things too. It was ghoulish and ghastly. And it was all things unimaginable. But Ernest D was the bravest of explorers. He battled and brawled until the moon ducked below. And in the moment between moonset and sunrise, Ernest D looked upon the endlessness of his newly discovered land. All of this was hiding in a pond, said Ernest D. How exceptional. So he returned to his pond, stretched three times, and dove back into lightless caverns, through sunken treasures, past the squid, sharks, and shapeless things, out of his pond and back into the world. But the world wasn't quite as he had left it. His house seemed a little less small, and his town looked a little less ordinary. Behind every street and silent corner was a place unexplored. Exceptional, said Ernest D. The end. How's that? I really like that one. All right, so let's see. We had in that one, there were squids. Squids in a pond. I still can't believe it. And on the other side, did you see that dinosaur too? There were a bunch of dinosaurs in a Sasquatch giant. Unbelievable. Or as Ernest D would say, how exceptional. All right. Well, before we read our last story, we have to sing some songs. So let's see. How about we do our sandy shoulders, sandy knees, sandy feet from last week? So let me remember. All right. Sandy shoulders, sandy knees, sandy feet. Sandy shoulders, sandy knees, sandy feet. Let's brush off. Let's be neat. Sandy shoulders, sandy knees, sandy feet. You think we can do that one faster? Oh, let's see. I think we can do it faster. All right. Sandy shoulders, sandy knees, sandy feet. Sandy shoulders, sandy knees, sandy feet. Let's brush off. Let's be neat. Sandy shoulders, sandy knees, sandy feet. I don't think I can do it any faster than that. So let's go on to another song. Let's do. <laughs> All right, our next song is about frogs. So let's sing Five Little Speckled Frogs. <sighs> Deep breath. <sighs> All right. Five little speckled frogs sitting on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. <laughs> One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were four speckled frogs. Blub, blub. Four little speckled frogs sitting on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were three speckled frogs. Blub, blub. Three little speckled frogs sitting on a speckled bog eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were two speckled frogs. Blub, blub. Two little speckled frogs sitting on a speckled bog eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there was one speckled frog. Blub, blub. One little speckled frog sitting on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. It jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were no speckled frogs. Blub, blub. Very good. All right. So our last book is called. I don't want to be a frog by Dev Petty and illustrated by Mike Bolt. I don't want to be a frog. 
I want to be a cat. You can't be a cat. Why not? Because you're a frog. I don't like being a frog. It's too wet. Well, you can't be a cat. I want to be a rabbit. You can't be a rabbit. Why not? Look, I can hop. Sure, but where are your long ears? Besides, what's wrong with being a frog? I don't like being a frog. It's too slimy. That may be, but you can't be a rabbit. I want to be a pig. You can't be a pig. Why not? Because most of all, you are a frog, but also because you don't have a curly tail or eat garbage. I can eat garbage. Everyone says that until they eat garbage. Sorry, you can't be a pig. I want to be an owl. Of course you want to be an owl. Being an owl is the greatest thing ever. Boy, you would love being an owl. So, can I be an owl then? No, of course not. Why not? One, you don't have wings. Two, you don't look wise. Three, you can't turn your head all the way around. And four, you are a frog. What's wrong with being a frog anyway? Too much bug eating. I see. But still, no being an owl for you. Why so glum? I don't want to be a frog. What do you want to be then? Not a frog. I want to be a cat or a rabbit or a pig or an owl. Something cute and warm. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I love eating cats. I love eating rabbits and pigs and owls too. And I am pretty hungry. I might just gobble some up right now. That's terrible. It's who I am. But guess the one thing I never eat. Badgers? No, I eat badgers, lots of badgers. Frogs? Bingo. Why don't you eat frogs? Because they are too wet and slimy and full of bugs. Oh, so it's good to be a frog. Yes. I guess you can't fight nature. We are what we are. You are a fierce hunter. And you are a wet, slimy, bug-eating, very lucky frog. You should just be happy you're not a fly. What's wrong with being a fly? <laughs> the end. <laughs> that one's pretty fun. So we've got all of these books this week at our library, but also in the NC Cardinal System. So remember, if there's a book you ever want to read, you can use your library card to check out books from all over North Carolina. Isn't that cool? I know I find a lot of good books that way too. So, also remember that if you haven't signed up for summer reading, go do so. We have so much going on and so much going on in person this year. I'm so excited to have in-person programs again. Um, we've also got take and make kits, so there's lots of cool crafts this summer. Um, yeah, just come by the library and see what's going on. Um, so let's see, I think we've got two more story times, maybe three, we'll see, but until next time, take care.